Okay, so I gave you a brief inter introduction about the idea of remote repositories. So this idea that you have your own local repository, you have your own folder of management, but you can interact with other repositories. And here's where we're going to dive into it, right? Now, the remote repository that we are going to be interacting with mainly is GitHub, okay? So picture it just as a version of your software sitting on a server that GitHub's hosting, and you're going to push, pull, fetch, and others just interact with that. And we're going to get into all that, okay? So let's get into GitHub. And let me show you what GitHub's all about, okay? So you just go to github.com, and you sign up for a free account. So I've signed up here, Casey Lee. Now, um, GitHub, the way it basically works is you have all these users on GitHub, and it has some smarts to say that once you create a repository, you can assign people permission to be able to interact with that repository, okay? So this is some extra layer of logic that it has, which is, is really cool, okay? Um, so if you're collaborating with a bunch of people, all you have to do is tell them to sign up for GitHub, and you can give them permission to do that, right? Now, by default, when you sign up for GitHub, all your repositories are public, okay? So GitHub, you know, is, is part of a, a open source kind of movement, right? So all your code is kind of public and people can see it. But however, if you're obviously, if you're designing company uh, private stuff, you can pay them online. I think it's like $7 a month to get like some private repository so people can't see it, okay? So just for example, if you go to my account, you can say github.com slash kcv, you can see all my public repositories here, right? You can see all the code that I've been uh, working on, right? So sign up for a GitHub account, and the second thing you want to do after that is set up what's called SSH keys, okay? So SSH keys, uh, the way you can kind of view it is that um, when you interact with GitHub, right, you're basically interacting with a repository that's sitting on the server, right? Now, with websites, you typically, you know, how does the, how does the website know that it's you who's like, you know, interacting with the website? They ask you for a username and password, right? So you, uh, you know, enter your name, your username, so you enter your username, you enter your password, and then they know it's you, so you can, like, you can play around with all the stuff you want to do, say, like, your Gmail account, or whatever. You can edit your emails, you can compose an email, you can do all that stuff, right? So your username and password is a way to authenticate with uh, web pages. Well, we're not really going to be interacting with GitHub solely based on a web page, right? We're going to be doing this in the background with Git commands, okay? So just like we've been doing stuff like Git status, okay, Git branch, things like that, right? We're going to be doing some commands like git push and git pull, okay? And git fetch. And what these commands do is they talk to remote repositories. So one of those remote repositories we're going to talk to is GitHub, okay? But GitHub is smart. GitHub doesn't want to just let anybody, you know, push code to your repository, right? If you're the owner of the repository, you don't want anybody to just randomly be able to push to code there. So what you have to do is you have to set up what's called SSH keys. So SSH keys, I don't know fully how they work to be honest, but they're a way of authenticating yourself to the GitHub server. So that when you do a git fetch, a git pull, a git push, right? Git is gonna use those SSH keys as kind of like a username and password, if you will, right? It's an authentication mechanism. So with the request, it sends this SSH key and then GitHub checks, is that SSH key part of this repository, then yes, or sorry, part of this user account, and does this user account have ability to push and pull from this repository, then yes, you can interact with it, okay? So if that was kind of confusing, you can read up more on SSH keys, but the, the main thing is SSH keys are a way for your Git command line to authenticate to the GitHub server to allow you to do stuff with the GitHub repositories, right? On a website, we don't use SSH keys, we use username and password. Uh, on command line, we use SSH keys, okay? okay? So in this video, I'm just gonna do it really simple. I'm gonna to start to create a GitHub uh, repository to interact with the repository that we've been dealing with all along, okay? All right, so remember where we are, okay? So we ha we're sitting here in my first piece of software. We've done a bunch of commits, right? So we look at the logs, right? There's a bunch of commits. We have a bunch of branches, right? We have the master branch, the blue feature branch, the green feature branch. We've done a bunch of commits and all that stuff like that, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell GitHub that we wanna host a version of our repository on your servers, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna create, in other words, a remote repository for our local repository, okay? So I'll show you how to do that. So when you're logged into GitHub, all right, 
you can just go to github.com and in the bottom right you can see new repository okay just click on that and I'm gonna give it a name so my first piece of software okay and this is just testing git for getting to know you videos okay now I don't have a paid account so I'm just gonna click I'll leave it as public and then I'm gonna create the repository okay so now what git has done is it's allocated a folder on the git servers just for me so under my account and called my first piece of software okay so it's, it's, it's allocated this empty folder that again has all these smarts all the git smarts right but the only thing it doesn't have at this point is a link between my local repository sitting on my machine and the repository sitting on their machines okay and this is what is brilliant about git and the git community they give you full instructions on how to do this stuff okay so you can ignore um, some of this now this piece here is setting up your uh, git command line okay so when you do a git push and a git pull and stuff like that um, you are committing with your name right and your email address and stuff like that so these are some properties that you want to set up for the very first time right so just fill in your name fill in your password uh, sorry fill in your not your password your email address you can set that up now here we've done this already we've created our first piece of software we've uh, we've done git in it and we've created a bunch of files okay so you can ignore this if you're taking this route right so the route that I'm taking is we're creating the software on our system first and then github later on in later videos we'll talk about the reverse where we actually grab the software from github and have it on our system okay but we're talking about right now we're starting on our system and we're pushing that to github okay so all this stuff here about making the directory and in initializing we've done that already okay and we've committed our code already so you can ignore that okay but what comes really what becomes really important is this right here maybe i should blow this up in case the resolution doesn't come out well Okay, so what becomes really important is this right here. So this line of, of uh, git command line is basically saying this. We're going to create a remote repository. In other words, a reference to a remote repository. Okay, so to let this guy know about these other repositories, we have what's called a remote repository. So we're going to create a new one. You use the keyword add because that's what we're doing. We're adding a repository. You can also remove a remote repository. And then we're going to call it origin. Now, origin is very, um, it's a keyword that I'll, I'll, I'll explain a little bit later, but just for now, you can name this whatever you want, but we're going to name it origin, okay? And this is the address of where we're going to find that repository, okay? Git has its own protocol, just like HTTP and FTP and all that stuff like that. Git has its own protocol. Uh, and this is the address of where we're going to find it, okay? So it's git at github.com, kcle, da, da, da. In other words, this is the pointer to the repository that's sitting on the GitHub servers, okay? So let's type that in. So we're going to do git remote add origin git at github.com Casey Lee my first piece of software dot git. Okay. Type it in exactly as it appears there. And then hit enter. Now what you've done is you created a reference. So now my piece, my piece of software sitting on my machine knows where the remote repository for github is okay in fact you can check that by typing git remote dash v v is verbose okay look at this you have a reference to something called origin and it's sitting here and you have fetch permissions on that and you also have that same repository with push permissions Okay, this will get very important when you get to things like uh, Heroku uh, and things like that if you're a Rails developer. Okay, so git remote dash v. Now I'll show you how that works again. Like we can remove this, right? Git remote, uh, I think it's remove or just rm maybe uh, origin. Yeah, and now it's gone again. Okay. So I basically undid what I just did just to show you how uh, remotes work, okay? So I could have called it anything I wanted, right? Git remote add uh, GitHub repository, okay? That's kind of long. Let's just talk GitHub R repo, okay? And again, we're going to do it the same address.
Okay. And if we do a git remote dash v, you'll see it's there. Now it's called GitHub repo. Okay. So normally you wouldn't call it GitHub repo. Usually GitHub you actually call origin, and I'll explain that in a second why. Um, but I'm just kind of showing how you can add and remove remotes. Okay. So let's remove that again and add the way we had it before. So let's just remove this GitHub repo. So it's gone. And then let's just add back the original version that we had. Git remote origin. Okay. All right, so that's how you make connections with other remote repositories. It's simply by doing a git remote add, and then you find the, uh, the address of that, okay? Now, again, like I said, these guys could have been hosting git servers on their, on their end as well, and then you just find the git address of that. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't really done that, a direct connection with another computer, but it's my understanding that all they have to do is run a git server, and then you find the address of it, and then you make this Git remote connection to it, and that's it, okay? So that's how you add a reference to GitHub, all right? So what have we done so far? We've created an empty repository on GitHub, we have our original repository sitting here, and we've made the connection between the two, okay? Now comes the next step of actually getting that code into GitHub, all right? So the way we do that is we follow the next line of code, git push origin master. Okay, so what this is basically saying is you're going to push your code, specifically the master branch, to the origin. All right. Now, what's the origin? Well, we define that up here, right? So if you have other if you have other remote repositories called like GitHub Repo or Heroku or whatever, you would say Git push the name of that repository and then the branch. Okay. Now here's the very first lesson about push, and we'll get in, into more detail about push in a second. But push only explicitly pushes um, branches that have already been there, okay? So if you push branches to this thing before, like master or red feature or green feature, then git push will automatically push your changes up to those branches. But if the remote repository does not know about your branch, you have to specify it the very first time, okay? So right now, our GitHub repository has no branches, right? It doesn't know about anything. It's kind of empty right now, right? So to get our master branch up there, we have to do a git push origin master, okay? Now you'll notice I'm skipping what dash u means. That's because honestly, I don't know what that means at this point. <laughs> I can look it up, it's, uh, we can look it up at some point. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do git push dash u origin so again, that's the name of the remote repository and then the name of the branch you want to push up there. Now this is where the magic happens. So this is going to go look at, from SSH keys and it's going to go interact with uh, GitHub and say, I'm going to start giving you guys some code, okay? Now hopefully my internet doesn't crash on me because my internet hasn't been acting out that well right now. Okay, so that failed, and that's just because my internet uh, just died recently. Uh, so my internet's back up and running, so we'll do that one more time. Git push dash u origin master. And you see what it did is it actually uploaded my code from my local master to a branch on the remote repository called master, so the matching names, and it's pushed all my code up to there. Okay, so if you go back to your GitHub, you can actually see this. If I click on, you know, my account slash my actual repository name, you can see everything we've been working on is in there, okay? In fact, you can even see our history of it. Look at that, all our history is there, okay? So GitHub has essentially got now a copy of our code and that's how remote repositories work, okay? So just to review what we did is we signed up for a GitHub account, set up our SSH keys, then created an empty repository by clicking on new repository. Then we added a remote by doing git remote add name of the remote, okay? And then the remote address, okay? And if you ever wanna see your remotes, just do git remote dash V. And then after that, we did a git push to the origin our master branch. Okay, next video we'll dive even deeper.